You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Supernova. So this path, I believe, is going to be dedicated to this fella right here, uh, Nessus. Nessus, however you guys want to pronounce his name. I was saying Menesis. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so apparently the three paths you can take are uh, Nessus, Super Fang, and a guy whose name I cannot remember. Uh, Super Gim. Okay, yeah, Super Gim. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> and she's in the background too, so that's kind of interesting. Hmm. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Let's uh, find out a little bit more about this world of superheroes and intrigue, shall we? All right, Alarm Chain, you are up, and let's jar in. Ooh, nice music. Ooh. Oh, that could be... Oh, that could double as some Doom music. Hell yeah. Okay, <clears throat> anyway. All right, let's go. Nisus and Super Fang start talking about something I can't quite can't quite make out as we leave the room. Unbound is silent as we walk, so I decide not to bother her with any questions right now. One thing's for sure, this is a lot to process. I don't know where to even start. The bracelet catches some of the ambient light. I had no idea Templar's powers weren't innate, or that they were passed from one person to another. Unbound mentions something about only someone worthy being able to wear it. Is that a thing? It sounds like the kind of fairy tale bullshit that would inspire one of the fantasy books I love. Not a source of an actual superhero's powers. Then again, I know that some heroes draw power from more mystical places. Other dimensions and stuff. Nevertheless, the idea that I could be worthy, whatever that means, of something like this seems incomprehensible. I've done nothing even remotely heroic all my life. Besides swinging that piece of rebar to a supervillain's back, I suppose. Would have been more heroic if I didn't sneak up on him first, though. My head is starting to spin. Rest. Unbound ushers me back into the room. The door slides closed behind her. <clears throat> My phone has somehow found its way onto the tiny table next to the bed, but I don't feel like making any calls yet. My stomach churns at the idea of talking to my worried parents. Lucas would have told them what happened for sure. I wonder if this was the, I wonder if this was on the news. What is that? Oh, is this a, oh just a reflection. Okay. I guess I can check. I browse the internet for a while, looking for any mentions of the fight. To my surprise, nothing. Maybe the Sentinels don't want the story of Templar's death out there yet. I have so many missed calls and messages. Shit. I put the phone away and stare into the ceiling for a while. My thoughts keep coming back to everything said in the meeting room earlier. I know that there was more to the discussion between the Sentinels than I caught, but I'm not about to start speculating about that. I'm getting an actual headache now. I contemplate just sleeping on it, but I know I shouldn't be this selfish, so I grab the phone again. Nick? Oh, that's his, his mom. Nick? My mom's voice is frantic. Yeah, Mom, it's me. Oh, thank goodness, we've been worried sick. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Just some bruises, nothing else. Her voice rises in pitch. Oh, boy. Just some bruises. Nick, it's been almost two days. We came to the hospital twice, but they wouldn't let us see you. I know, I know. I, I, they, I guess the police just wanted to be the first to speak with me. I grimace as the words leave my muzzle. Not my best lie, but I suppose I can work with that. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the hospital a piece of my mind tomorrow. And you better have remembered the name of the officer who spoke with you. They'll be hearing from me, too. Mom, for God's sake, I'm fine, okay? I just slept for a while. It's not a big deal. It's, not a, it's a big deal when I'm not allowed to see my son. Your father was about ready to bust the doors down himself. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty mad too, but honestly, I'm just glad I wasn't hurt that bad. Isn't that all, isn't that, all that actually matters? Ah! Blah, I'm getting these voices mixed up. Isn't that all that actually matters? Well, I'll be out of here tomorrow. I know that's likely not true, but if I tell them it's going to be more than that, my mom will insist on visiting again and the whole charade will collapse. We're picking you up first thing in the morning. Lucas will pick me up. I'll get Lucas. Lucas already promised to pick me up, okay? He has my car. Oh, Lucas, I suppose. Are you sure that's fine? Yeah, positive. How about I promise to come see you guys next weekend, after I'm done with the exams? Mom doesn't reply yet. I can hear her speaking with Dad, but not the exact words being exchanged. All right, all right, honey. 
Just don't forget, and bring Lucas. Was he the one who told you guys? Yes, he was very worried about you. Well, okay then. I'll see if he has time to come. Call you soon? Make sure you do that. Alright, Mom. I'm sorry I'm sorry to worry you. Bye. Good night, sweetie. They end the call and stare down at my phone. All things considered, that was pretty painless. Mom can be a real handful at times, but at least I managed to talk her down. I guess whatever the Sentinels did to keep up the appearance of me being at the hospital worked well. I might have been interested in how they persuaded anybody to go along with this, but it's frankly the least of my worries right now. I decided to text Lucas instead. I have a dozen missed calls from him and even more messages. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Lucas. Hey dude, just woke up. I'm all good. Holy shit, I've been worried ma I've been mad worried. What the fuck happened? Don't know to be honest. Something must have hit me during the fight. You good? He takes a moment to type his response while I keep my eyes glued to the screen. Alright, what's it? Yeah. Good. The nurse said Superfang brought me here. Did you see him? Saw him jump up there. Spoke with Nem spoke with Nisus too. Spoke with Nisus though. Told me where I'd find you, but they wouldn't let me see you. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Those nurse said I should be good to go soon. You got my car? No. You had the keys. Oh. Right. Okay. I'll message you tomorrow. Night. Call? The signal sucks, but I'll see what I can do. Sure. Good night. God damn it. What a mess. I messaged several other friends and put my phone down. I noticed some fresh clothes on a chair in the corner of the room. Do the Sentinels have someone taking care of stuff like this in their secret base? I glance at the ceiling. Something... something more like. Thank you, Gil. There's no need to thank me, Mr. Saunders. Just, Nick is fine. Your preference has been noted. Is there a bathroom and shower I can use? I will guide you to the facilities. I nod, pick up the clean clothes, then leave the room. As promised, Gil's synthetic voice guides me down a couple dim hallways. Now that I'm getting a proper look, this whole place seems a little bit cramped, at least when it comes to the corridors connecting the various rooms. Gil, how large is this place? The base has spaces for the needs of all members of the team, as well as a meeting room, training facilities, garage, and several other spaces that you are currently unable to access. Asking where all this stuff is located is probably pointless. Gil guides me into a spacious bathroom equipped with everything I need at the moment. I undress and look at myself in the mirror. My fur has been cleaned at some point, but it's still a mess. When I, parted, when I parted on my chest, I winced at the sight. The fur does a good job of concealing it, but right now my torso is pretty much one giant bruise. It's a wonder the supervillain didn't shatter my ribs. I suppose I should count myself lucky. Very lucky. Sighing, I step into the shower and just stand there under the hot water for a solid ten minutes before I make any moves to clean myself. There are several bathrobes hanging there for when I'm done, but I like to ignore them and just put on the clothes provided for me. The thought of any of the superheroes I just met walking around these walk these hallways in a bathrobe or wrapped in a towel brings a chuckle to my muzzle. Gil directs me back to my room. I'm not looking forward to sleeping on the medical bed again, but I'm not about to start whining about it. Before I drift off, I just stare at the bracelet adorning my wrist. I can't tell what material it's made of. The engraving seemed to depict a stylized warrior surrounded by a weave of odd Celtic-looking patterns and glyphs. Appropriate, I suppose. I need to know way more about all this. Hopefully the Sentinels can explain. And then I will need to make a decision. It's a simple choice, really. Do something with what Templar gave me, or don't. Except there's nothing simple about it. But I'm not about to tackle that right now. Despite having woken up not that long ago, I'm already exhausted. Drained. I'll have to wait until tomorrow. His body's probably changing. Hmm. What do we got? Sleep doesn't afford me as much clarity as I'd like. There's a bland breakfast waiting for me when I wake up, which I promptly consume, all while my thoughts race to make sense of everything that's been happening to me. Before they spiral out of control, though, I'm interrupted by Gil. Nick, Unbound has indicated that she would like to speak with you. She will be here in a moment. Uh, Unbound? All right. I had just started I had just started considering talking with one of the Sentinels, but Unbound wouldn't have been my first choice. She never offered it, she never offered to in the first place, but even beyond that, I think I already know what she'll have to say in response to my doubts. 
As Gil stated, the bear gets here within five minutes. I'm dressed and sitting on the bed, waiting, when she steps into the room, this time without the use of her powers. Good afternoon, Nick. Hi, I mean, uh, hello, Unbound. You wanted to speak with me? With a nod, she surveys the room, then seems to decide to stay standing. I believe we should discuss your current situation. I clench and unclench my right fist, eyes fixed on the figure etched into the metal of the wristband. After a long moment, I look, back, I look up at the bear. Sure, then you think I am actually cut out for this? You have the bracelet. That should be indication enough that you are. How does this even work? Did the bracelet approve of me, or did Templar? Judging from what you told us, which I am inclined to believe, it was a combination of both. I rubbed the fro on my arm, thinking... You said yesterday that I don't really have a choice. That was perhaps an inaccurate assessment. It is not that you don't have a choice. Rather, there is an obvious correct choice and an obvious wrong one. I believe you know which it is, which is which. My stomach twists into a knot. I'm just... It's scary. Unbound continues to regard me, her expression not shifting. If she feels any sympathy, her voice doesn't show it at all. A perfectly natural and understandable response. Nevertheless, I believe that you can and should work through that fear. I hug my arms and avert my gaze again. It's becoming clear to me now that a part of me was excited for what I could be doing with this, but that feeling has all but evaporated now. Unbound exhales, looking a little bit frustrated, which has nothing to calm my nerves. Nick, you have been given an opportunity, an opportunity most folks don't get. To get something great, to do something great with your life, be part of something bigger. You haven't just acquired powers beyond most people. Templar was, is a symbol that has inspired millions. He brought this team together. He protected this city, this country, this, this earth against a myriad of threats. We need that symbol now. As far as I'm concerned, to reject this call would be inconceivable. Shit. That is overwhelming. Everything Unbound just said makes me feel so small and weak. I can't be a goddamn symbol, I'm just a college kid. She told me herself yesterday she doesn't believe I can live up to Templar. So why? My heart is racing. I know she's right. I do. I think this is what the Badger was asking of me, to take on this burden. Maybe that's why he said he was sorry. Because he knew how overwhelming it was going to be. Unbound walks over to the only chair in the room, moving the stuff Gil left for me, and sits. Nick, I... I don't want to give you the wrong idea. For the first time, her cadence changes. She speaks in a kinder tone now, and even her expression softens. I will not sugarcoat it in an attempt to reassure you. That would be unfair to you and to Templar. This is going to be difficult, but with our guidance and support, you will be able to pull through. Do the best you can do. If I say no, you'll go back to your old life with no regrets, I hope. I'm silent for a while longer, but then a nervous chuckle escapes me. Sorry, I promise I'm not usually this indecisive. Quite frankly, Nick, if you had jumped at the opportunity, I would be questioning your judgment. That you are weighing your op that you are weighing your options as a sign you're taking this your situation seriously. Right, then would you mind if I take a little more time to think? Of course. Let Gil know when you're ready to talk again. I'll do that. Thank you, Unbound. She hesitates in the doorway, but then her cape swishes as she rounds the corner, and I'm left alone. It doesn't take me long to decide that pacing around is doing less than nothing for me, though. Even if I said I needed to think. There are two people who offered to talk about this. Maybe I should take one of them up on that offer, and there was the one who didn't, but it could still be worth it to hear him out. Uh, I'm gonna go with Nisus on this run. So, okay, so this is where we're going to save that... And that is going to be the choice. Chat with Nisus. Nisus was the most supportive of me yesterday. Surprisingly friendly, too. Surprisingly, because as far as superheroes go, Nisus has always been a bit of an enigma. Hell, I don't even know what his actual superpowers are. Just that whenever he shows up, he kicks ass. But in general, he seems to stay out of the spotlight. No interviews, no appearances on talk shows, nothing of the sort. Regardless, his words yesterday were comforting. I'll go and talk to him more. Hmm. Gil, can I speak with Nisus? Gil replies after a brief delay, which I suppose just means he's checking in with the fox. Certainly, Nick. Nisus is in the meeting room. I head out at once. Hmm. Interesting symbols we got. 
Hmm. I wonder where all these mean. Oh, okay, one second, guys. Gotta yell at. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. I'm slow to enter the meeting room, and when I get there, I'm afraid I'll interrupt something important. Nobody's talking, though, as far as I can tell, so it, sh so it should be alright. I notice Nisa sitting in the same chair as yesterday, a piece of paper in front of him. He's scribbling something, an intense look of concentration on his face. Neither Mask nor Cal conceal his face. Turns out Nisus is quite a handsome Corsic fox. Not much older than me, either, judging by his appearance. He doesn't look up, his nose close to the paper, his whiskers twitching. I don't think he's seen me yet. Suddenly he growls, grabs the paper, and tears it in half. It's then that he notices me, and his snarl shifts into a more neutral, if blank, expression. <sighs> Sorry about that. He leans down to snatch one of the torn halves off the floor, then crumples it into a ball. Is this a bad time? Not at all. By all means, sit. I try not to frown. Nisus' voice is very flat, with just a slight undertone of anger. I hope it's not directed at me. I sit as instructed anyway, looking around. The other sentinels must either be away or somewhere else in the base. Several news updates are playing on the vast wall monitor, but the sound is muted. Nisus closes his eyes. I give him a curious glance. Just then, they're open again, and his voice is far warmer when he speaks. How are you holding up, Nick? Now he sounds like he did yesterday. Fine, I think. Just, I still haven't quite wrapped my head around this. <laughs> I get it. Where are the others? Out and about. Unbound is investigating the wolf that attacked Templar. I see. She didn't mention that. Fox tilts his head to the side. You spoke with her? Y yeah. Well, either way, we don't have many leads at the moment. Baron hasn't, design hasn't deigned to contact us since our last... Talk. Super Fang popped in earlier, but I think he left again. He likes doing the whole hero on the streets thing. I nodded his words. Hope Unbound finds that bastard soon. He needs to pay. Nick, listen, there's a lot going on right now. We're all on edge, but that doesn't mean you should feel pressured into doing, well, anything really. No matter what others say. In some ways, yes, but what Unbound said is true. One way or another, I've been given this responsibility, right? Did you ask for it? For any of this? No. I can't quite read the expression on the fox's face. He leans back into his chair with a sigh. I don't know why Templar would do this. There's a sudden tightness in my chest. I hoped if anybody could answer that question, it would be his teammates. Maybe it's best not to dwell on this. All I can hope for is that he, was a, is, that he is a good reason. And whatever it was, I would hate to prove him wrong. I raised my arm to show the bracelet. And Nisa eyes it with obvious discomfort. That's an unfair way of looking at this. You shouldn't let someone's lingering shadow determine your destiny. Lingering shadow, huh? Well, he has a point there. Templar cast a long shadow at that. Even so, I don't think that's a bad thing. Although you're right, there must be a reason you have that bracelet. You can use it, but again, that doesn't mean you have to do that. There could be others. I think if you just decided you don't want to do this, the bracelet would find its way to someone else. I, don't, I won't blame you for that decision. Nobody will. I swallow anxiety building once again, even though the words are comforting. Unbound, Will. You're your own person, Nick. I'm taken aback at how sharp those words come out. But he's right. Back there, when I was watching that fight, I was pretty much helpless, you know? But that bastard was smashing his fists over and over into Templar, and I could and I could tell it wasn't going to end well. I was terrified, to be honest. But I saw that piece of rebar, and it's all I had at the moment, right? I had to grab it. Templar was a hero. I've seen him rescue so many people, so I swung, even though I knew I might die. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I have to do this. Templar asked me to use his power. I think I should. There's a long silence. Nisus is giving me a searching look, but I meet his gaze, feeling confident in what I just said. Sure, there might be others who could do this, but Templar asked me. I don't know why, but that's what happened. And I will do what he asked. Fox buries his face in his paws. I don't know if I agree with your reasoning, but if that's what you want. He lowers his arms and stares at the table, brows furrowed. I guess you know best, Nick. <sighs> Templar... Thanks, Nisus. Frank, may as well call me by my name. 
We sit again, the fox drumming on the table with his fingers. Now, I'll be happy to help you with whatever you need. That being said, I don't think I would make a good mentor. As difficult as he is, as he is Baron was closest to your predecessor. It can give you the kind of guidance I can. I'll keep that in mind. I don't think I am all that comfortable with the idea of asking the Baron in black for assistance. I still haven't forgotten that comment about chopping off my arm. I voice of none, and a voice none of that, however, letting the silence go on a little longer, with Nisus lost in his own thoughts, but then curiosity overtakes me. Frank, can I ask you something? Of course. Are you a magic user? There's a pause before he responds. Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. I guess I just don't know what your powers are. The fox chuckles. I'm not. Magic users tend to be insular. They don't typically join teams from that from what I've seen. Oh, you know some then? A couple, but anyway, it's not now's not the time for that. I should let the others know you've made up your mind. Unbound might want to call another meeting. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. No worries. Gil, will you will you uh, Gil will guide you back to the med room. See you soon. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another awesome episode of Supernova. Well, it appears that the mantle of Templar has now fallen on our main hero. Ooh, I can't wait to see what he does with it. How much ass is he gonna kick? How much is he going to get his ass kicked? <laughs> Who knows? We shall see in future episodes. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!